everyone, Walter Bound here, uh, talking about Huckleberry Finn, uh, but more specifically the German term Bildungsroman, which means really a novel of formation, a novel of education, in which an author takes a character like Huck Finn, generally young, and we go through his development into maturity. Oftentimes in the novel, in a Bildungsroman, we have a crisis. There's some sort of spiritual crisis. And in Huckleberry Finn, of course, this comes, where do you think, take a guess, on the raft, right? Whether or not he's on the raft thinking about, should I turn Huck, uh, Jim in? Or should I go to hell, breaking the law and breaking biblical law by, you know, helping a slave, you know, it's kind of ironic uh, that he's doing what actually a Christian should do, but in his Christianity, it's actually a bad thing. Uh, and that's his spiritual crisis. And he decides, I'd rather go to hell and help my friend Jim than turn him in and do the right thing by society because he's property. If you turn to chapter 31 class, um, towards the end, he's on the raft by himself. And this is where he has uh, that dark night of the soul, a famous poem by uh, St. John of the Cross. That's the only, that's a very famous poem. Uh, called The Dark Night of the Soul by some guy called uh, St. John of the Cross. A uh, medieval poem, I believe. Uh, but here he's by himself and he's thinking, right? And there's a picture of, of Huck in the story, thinking, right? And, and follow along with me. He says, I feel good and all washed clean of sin for the first time. I had ever felt so in my life. And I knew that I could pray now, but I didn't do it straight off, but laid the paper down and sat there thinking thinking how good it was all this happened so and how near I came to being lost and going to hell. So he picks up this paper, right? Miss Watson, your runaway Jim, and we're uh, Jim, is down here two miles below. Pikesville and Mrs. Phelps has got him and will give him up for the reward if you send Huck Finn. So Huck Finn writes this saying, listen, I have your Jim, I have your slave. Uh, I'm down here and I'll give him up for the reward if you send. So he's like, I will get money if I re return Jim, right? which is the right thing to do in the South, right? Uh, but now he's thinking, what should I do with this? Like, should I actually send this? So this is that kind of uh, ethical dilemma, this moral conscious crisis that he's having here. And so he says, I went on thinking and got to thinking over our trip down the river. And I see Jim before me all the time in the day and in the nighttime, sometimes moonlight, sometimes storms, and we go a floating along, talking and singing and laughing. Imagine if two people, black and white, could sit together in a room and be together all the time in a car on a road trip. Would that break down racism if you got to know someone else as a human being rather than as a race, rather than as a religion? I'm a human being. I might be Muslim, I might be Latino, but at the end of the day, we all bleed, right? And we all cry and we all laugh and we all have dreams, and Huck here is beginning to break down the racism that he sees in, that he sees in, his, in his society. And he says, but somehow I couldn't seem to strike no places to harden me against him. There's nothing against him that I would return him, right, to, to slavery, but only the other kind. I'd see him standing my watch on top of his instead of calling me so I could go on sleeping and see how glad he was when I come back out of the fog. So he, Jim was happy to see him again, that he was not lost, that Huck was not lost. And up there where the feud was and such like times and could always call me honey and pet me and do everything he could to think for me. So in a way, Jim is a bit of a father figure. Of course, Huck's father is awful, pap, right? Abusive, uh, verbally, physically, just a miserable wretch of a person. And here's Jim, older, maybe wiser in some ways, and helping the young Huck find his identity. Right. And you're telling me that a uh, man had smallpox aboard, he was so grateful, and I said he was the best friend Jim ever had in the world, and only one he's got now. So that's it. That's the two, they're two together, right? That here we have that kind of bromance kind of thing, but. Is it a bromance because they're not really equals? And then I happened to look around and see that paper that he, that he wrote. It was a close place, 
I took it up, held it in my hand. It was trembling because I got to decide forever between two things, and I noted. I studied a minute, sort of holding my breath, and then says to myself, all right then, I'll go to hell, and tears it up. That is significant. He decides I'm gonna to go to hell and tear up this. I'm gonna break the law. I'm gonna go against God's wishes just because I know in my conscience it's the right thing to do. Tremendous insight here with Huck. And he says, it was awful thoughts and awful words but they were said, and I let them stay said, and never thought no more about reforming. Think about the irony here, that he needs to reform to be a racist, right? Crazy, right? But that's the way the South in Missouri at this time, they were thinking. I shoved the whole thing out of my head and said, I would take up the wickedness again, which was in my line, being brung, uh, brung up to it, and the other weren't. And for a starter, I would go to work and steal Jim out of slavery again, and if I could think of anything worse, I would do that too. Because as long as I was in, I was in for good. I might as well go the whole hog. He's using a colloquialism right, right there, right? You go the distance. I'm going to go the whole hog with this. If Jim was ever stolen and brought back to slavery again, I'm going to go the whole hog and I would steal him again and, and rescue him. Just because it's the right thing to do. Just like Spike Lee, do the right thing, right? So this, this, he goes on a little bit more in chapter uh, 31. But mostly that's the, the essence of his spiritual crisis, uh, which is a, a pivotal moment in the, in the book. And we could talk about climax and where, where does that happen in the, in the story, but this is a very pivotal moment uh, in chapter 31 of Huck Finn. So that's really his crisis, right? It's, 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 that's the crisis in the novel. Uh, the Bildungsroman has a long history. Okay, we can go and look at Charles Dickens, David Copperfield, uh, Henry Fielding's Tom Jones. All right, these are both great British novels. Of course, they are very weighty because when you're talking about the development of a person, whether it's uh, David Copperfield or, or Pip or Tom Jones, which is a pretty uh, randy novel uh, by Henry Fielding, uh, 18th century, or even John Irving's A Prayer for Owen Meany, uh, which is maybe not so much of a Bildungsroman, but it's basically a Bildungsroman because we have the formation of a person, right? And we see that development. And it's how the mind develops and how the character comes to be. And at the end, there's a general self-awareness of the character's role in the world. We can debate whether or not Huck has this self-awareness. The ending of Huckleberry Finn, not to, you know, some people like it, some people don't like it. it you know, when uh, Sawyer comes back and things seem to wrap up and it's, it's a really weird ending. Uh, but then he lights out to the West. He does what he was trying to escape. We can talk whether or not he comes to any kind of awareness or does he just go back to placating with Tom and going along with what Tom wants to do? Has there been any true transformation of Huck's character? And we'll be talking about that in class. I'd like to know what you guys think. But understand this novel is basically a Bildungsroman. It's many things. It's, it's, uh, it's an episode episodic novel as we talked about uh, it goes from episode to episode we can say this is in the picaresque tradition of a rogue a young rogue traveling around the country going from one adventure to the another adventure like uh, Don Quixote uh, but if we think about this as a novel of formation a novel of education all right the other type of novel, there's many different types of novels we'll be studying this year. Another type of novel that we will not get to, but you'll get to next year, is the Kunstler novel, which is sort of like, it's another German term, uh, which really means the, the, the development of an artist. How does an artist develop his or her art? And the, one of the most famous is a portrait of an artist as a young man, James Joyce. Uh, you'll probably get this next year. Uh, so this is just a little, uh, little course on the Bildungsroman in relation to Huckleberry Finn. Take care, see you in class, bye.